log entry, the catch Scarlet Queen, Philip Carney, master. Position, 123 degrees west, 38 degrees, 17 minutes north. Gyro compass course, 327. Wind fresh, sky fair. Remarks, proceeding from Jinsen, Korea, to Tianjin, China, with dead man aboard. Reason for death, the lily in the Chimulpo bar. It was a fair trip and a fast one through the inland sea, then south through the channel of Chushima Kaikyo and into the long rolling swells of the East China Sea. The Scarlet Queen was north of the trades now, and she reached around the tip of the Korean Peninsula with the spanking passage wind abeam and swung her bows into the Yellow Sea. He's out the quarter, man. He's off the main inversion. Smartly now. The angle of the wind moved abaft, and we trimmed her for the run up the Korean coast. <laughs> The next day, we docked in Jinsen Harbor. It was an unscheduled stop on the charted voyage of the Scarlet Queen. No Kang contact to meet until we made Shanghai. And that meant no danger from Kang's rival, Constantino. But we did need the port to take care of some minor ship repairs that we didn't have time for in Kobe due to the Constantino trouble that developed around Kang's Boston Geisha and Chesapeake Bay. So Jinsen was one port where I thought I could look for some relaxation instead of someone sneaking up behind me. My chief mate, Gallagher, and the crew turned to on sail repairs, and I wandered up into the dusty city. The street was typically oriental, bustling with movement, most of it concerned with carrying a burden of some kind from one place to another. Horses, carts, trucks, rickshaws, men bent double from heavy loads on their shoulders. I was just passing under a hanging sign that advertised... The Chimulpo Bar, drink served with or without ice. Oh, bless my soul. You there. When a voluminous voice boomed out of the narrow doorway leading into the dim interior. Yes, you. You think this sparkle in my eyes for anyone else in sight? <laughs> it's a little sudden, isn't it? Indeed it is. A strange new white man doesn't happen to me every day. One so beautiful as you, not even every year. You're pretty charming yourself. Well, well. Come in, won't you? Come out after you if I went so broad across the... <laughs> now you can see for yourself. I have to ease out of this doorway sideways. And, well, you can see for yourself. Her profile, matched against the narrow opening, left no need for words. Don't let it scare you, dearie. Come on in. There's opportunity for a man like you in the Chimofo bar. <laughs> So Mutual continues The Voyage of the Scarlet Queen, written by Gil Dowd and Bob Tallman, and starring Elliot Lewis. The Scarlet Queen, proudest ship to plow the seas, bound for uncharted adventure. Every week a complete entry in the log, and every week a league further in the strange Voyage of the Scarlet Queen. Her name was Lily Swain, and she went a long way toward filling the emptiness of the Chimulpo bar. The hair she fluffed up as I followed her in was a red wig. Her broad face held a few traces of earlier thinner beauty, and they were exaggerated by heavy makeup. She was about shoulder high. Her arms were solid from wrist to elbow with bracelets, and the sags of her throat were held in by an inch and a half of jeweled choker. Hi, you. You have to be see. You want it? We have for you guests. You mix drinks chop chop while you're still one piecey boy. Yes, we uh, <laughs> There now. Sit down and tell Lily all about yourself. A seaman from your clothes. A big one. My, my. Captain Phil Carney, San Francisco. You don't say. Did you bring any American magazines? No, I didn't. Any newspapers, phonograph records? No. All the way out here from the States and you didn't bring anything American? Of course, 25 years ago, I wouldn't have asked for all these inanimate things. You'd be enough. Mm -hmm. There now, don't be embarrassed. Hey, you, you go catchy hold Miss Ellis. You tell a big, peasy man out here. Oh, oh yes, Missy. Oh, a big, peasy man, all right. <laughs> catchy, Missy, Alice, all right. What did you say you were doing in Shenzhen? I didn't say. How can you be so mysterious with such a wide-open, friendly face? 
Unbend, Phil. I won't sit on your lap. Well, I'm not doing anything here. I'm just passing through. From here, I'm going down the coast of China. From there, I'm going across the line into the shallow seas. Then maybe I'll come back. Is that the way you make your living? Well, I can't. You, know. you have your own ship? <laughs> Lily, you're a nosy old busybody. Let's hear about you for a while. Huh? <laughs> All right, so you don't want to talk about what you've done or what you're going to do. Uh -huh. I've met your kind before in this prison and that one. Been married to a few. <laughs> well, then you'd understand. There are opportunities in Korea for a young man like you. If you've got the guts for it. No, well, meaning what? Just for example, I know a certain party that would pay you $1,500 to get in a certain cargo from here to Chensin. Huh? What is it, guns or narcotics? Will that make any difference to you? It might. Well, it's neither. It's perfectly legitimate. I have a cargo of ginseng roots. It'll bring $10,000 gold on the current Tintin market. Huh? You know the Chinese demand for the stuff. They think it's the one herb of all medicine herbs. Cure for everything from lovesickness to the opposite. Whatever that is. Mm -hmm. With inflation, I've seen $300 offered for less than five pounds of it. Right in this room. A few roots. No bigger than turnips. Well, that sounds pretty good, Lily. Ah, believe me, Phil... If you'd stick with the lily, we'd work a fortune out of the Yellow Sea. All right, a minute now. I'll go get the papers. Well, big PC man is right. Oh, Phil, this is my daughter Alice, Phil Carney. Mm-hmm. Captain Carney's going to take our cargo to Shenzhen. What do you think of that? Looks all right to me. I right, fill another drink, dearie. I'll go and get the papers ready for him to sign. The same, darling? Yeah. She was easy to say yes to. Rust-colored hair, green eyes under cultivated brows and long lashes, and a way of walking toward the bar that told as much of her background as you needed to know. But the expression she brought back with her told me she wanted to share it all. <sighs> How does it feel to be the most popular man in Jinsen, Phil? Oh, a little unreal somehow, since the Chimopo Bar is the only place I've been. What did the Lily tell you? That she had a cache of ginseng worth 10,000 bucks on the Tiansin market. But she didn't tell you where she got it. I didn't ask her. Oh. That gives me the line I wanted on your character. I like it. I think we could be very close friends. I think that would be very nice. Then we're agreed. But, Phil, you'll have to be careful of her. She lies. What are you giving me? She's told the truth so far, hasn't she? She knew your ship was in the harbor as soon as you did, for one thing. And she introduced me as her daughter, but I'm not... So? Where'd that get her? Mm, nothing like the hearty mother, sexy daughter act. Pull a normal guy around. We've done it before, but I'm fed up. Look, Phil. She's a lot more desperate than she admits. Mm -hmm. She stole that ginseng from some native planters inland. They're on a trail. She's got to get it out of here before they find it. You think I shouldn't load it, then? Oh, sure, Phil. But you're crazy if you do it for $1,500. You could have another thousand without even half trying. She won't trust a native ship. She's desperate, I tell you. Are you? Another drink for Captain Carney and one for me. Yep. Oh, Don't even hint at what I said, but hold out for that extra grand and see what happens. Mm -hmm. Run along now, Alice. Time for business again. Here are the papers to sign. Maybe I'll see you later, Captain. Oh, thank you. Lily, my darling, there's already one drink here, and you promise... Stop sniveling. I'll think it over. Phil, this is Ray. Hello, Ray. Raymond Fleming Culbertson, sir. Mr. My... Uh... He's my partner in this place. 90% of my work is keeping him away now, from... Now, Lily, that is not the truth. I've had not one single... Not one single drink since the 4th of July. And you promised that I could have another one today. He can't drink. He falls down on one, can't get up without on another. Falls Prevail down on... Prevail upon us, sir. Perhaps I could just have one on the table to look at until after we transact our brief business here. Just to look at... Well, that isn't so good, Ray. Because I don't think we're going to transact any business. I beg your pardon. Uh, then by all means, I do need a drink. You're teasing me, Phil, aren't you? I don't like it, Lily. It should be a simple business deal, but everybody's too anxious to talk me into it. It makes me think I've got you over a barrel. I'm more important than I realize. I might listen for an extra thousand. Did you hear that, my pet? His words hang heavy. I do need that drink. Drop it. It's a hard bargain, Phil, but you're all right. You do have me over a barrel. I'll give you the extra thousand if you'll swear that there'll be no more bargaining or questions. 
Come on now, be a good boy. You be a good girl with agreement signed by both of us, and there'll be only one more thing. I just want to see the cargo to be sure it's ginseng. Ah, Phil. I'd even be satisfied if you were 25 years older. What a team we'd make. Come on, I'll show you the stuff. She led me down some earth steps to a dank cellar under the rear of the building. We pulled the top few layers off of what looked like a pile of lumber and uncovered a stack of rough hemp bags about the size of cement sacks. I pulled a few of them out at random and opened them. Uh, it was ginseng, all right. And it looked like an easy deal for $2,500. I shook Lily's hand, we went upstairs and signed the agreements, and I went back to the ship. About three hours after dark, a crew of natives arrived with the cargo and it started coming aboard. An hour later, we were making last-minute preparations for leaving. Gallagher was below digging out some charts, and I was on the deck watching two crewmen make ready to hoist the gangway aboard when I heard the footsteps coming down the pier. Phil! Captain Connie! Leave the gangway, boys. I'm coming ashore. Phil! Oh, Phil, they found her. They came after the lily. Oh, it's so horrible. Is she dead? Yes, Poor Pao Yu, that killed him, too. How about Ray? I don't know. I heard the Lily scream out in front, and when I went out, I found her and Pao Yu. Ray wasn't there. The only place I could think of to come was here. What are you going to do? With the hottest cargo in Jin Sen aboard, I'd like to dump it and leave. Well, you don't mean it. They'll kill me, too. What's up, Skipper? Who's the ranch? Trouble. This is Alice. I'm sending her aboard. Break out enough rifles to arm the crew and stand by. i got to go up into town for a little while. The Chimopo bar was as quiet as a tomb when I slipped in through a side entrance. I eased as quietly as I could through the hall and into the main room. There's something about dead, fat people that makes them look deader than any other variety. Lily Swain slumped at a table with her red wig cocked over one ear, her bracelet heavy arms hanging stiffly down at her side. How you was spilled across the teakwood bar as if he'd been coming over to save her when a bullet stopped him. I started back towards the living quarters, gingerly giving the rooms a once-over. In the third one, I found him, sprawled on a rumpled canvas cot. He wasn't dead, but the bottle on the floor beside him was. I scooped him up, threw him across my shoulder, and headed back toward the ship. All right, Skipper, you got him aboard. Now what? Please, Phil, you'll still get your $2,500. Ray and I own the ginseng now that... The lily's dead. We'll see that you get it. They'll kill us if you leave us here. Why should this change things for I you? I guess we've waited long enough. 11.30. Break out the crew, Red. Stand by to cast off. Right. Skipper. I'll check tide and currents. Be up with you in a minute. Phil, I don't know. Go on over How there and it... sit down, gorgeous. We're going to work. Hey, all the watches. Turn to. Phil. You can sleep when you get home. I just Hold want up. to tell you... Stand by to cast off. I'm going to make this worth your while. You'll see, Phil. Okay. Really, you Okay, will. like I said, that could be nice, but this is no time for it. I'm supposed to keep this ship from running aground. To do that, i got to concentrate. Now, go on. Get over there and sit down. All right, sir. And wait here till I get back. All right. Stand by the press line. Lake them out neat so we won't be on deck all night. Hey, Chief, look. Out there on the water. Keep your light on him. What do you got, Red? What's up? A native out there in the water. Where? You see him? Stop it at. Maybe I shouldn't have nailed him. He shouldn't have been swimming near the ship either. We better get out of here before his friends show up. Yeah, cast off. I'll get the motor started. Cast off all line. Let's go, man. Get him free. Get him free. We crept away from the pier and went out into the cold blackness of the Jensen Harbor with only the binnacle light glowing dully near the wheel. It may have been coincidence, but the discovery of the Korean swimming near the Queen made me wonder if a pair of dark eyes and a pair of sharp ears weren't behind the fact that a Korean junk slipped into the stream on our stern. I caught the milky curl of her bow wave shining in the murk behind us. And she followed us as we headed out into the Yellow Sea. I, uh, hope you don't mind if I... Make myself at home in your cabin? No. You're quite becoming to the place. A woman's touch does a good once in a while. You sound like we're far enough away from land for you to relax. The closest is about a hundred fathoms, straight down. Uh, what was the shooting just before we left? 
A native was in the water near the ship. What's the matter? He didn't get aboard. Oh, nothing. Was well, that what he was trying to do? Was he swimming towards the ship? I don't know. I don't know where he came from, but he didn't get where he was heading. What's the matter? Nothing, Phil. Really. Could we have a drink? Look, if you've got anything on your mind, spill it. Then we'll have the drink. There's a junk following us. Maybe the guy in the water was from her and they're still after the ginseng. Is that what you're worried about? Yes, Phil. I'm just still jittery, that's all. Take it easy, then. We can outrun them to ten cents. I know you can, Phil. I told you I'm just kind of shaky from everything. Hmm. Well, maybe that drink will help. Phil. Hmm? You know the cargo's stolen. You're still carrying it, aren't you? What's that for? Just remember that line I had on your character? I still like it. And I still think we could be close friends. You're becoming that way, too. Put the drinks down, Phil. We can have them later, can't we? It's a tough, close reach from Jinsen to Tiansen. And I spent most of my time at the wheel while we struggled along close hauled, with the wind a little better than four points off our starboard bow on the direct course. It was a hard leg for crew and ship. Letting her off at intervals, then up again on a new tack, we'd covered our estimated distance by mid-afternoon the next day. We were bearing in on the peninsula of Shantung, some 200 miles north-northeast of Tiansen. The wind had shifted closer to our beam. We were easing off onto a more pleasant reach. He's on the beam, man. He's off the main and fifth end. Smartly now! I swung the wheel to left, giving her a strong weather helm to meet the new drive of the wind. I felt a break in the tension of the wheel, then it spun uselessly. Watch it! Get off the main boom! She's jamming! Shorten sail! Shorten sail! Curl everything, Gallagher! Bring him in! I got no helm! Bring all sails! In two minutes, the sails were crumpled on their booms. And the Scarlet Queen was motionless in the middle of the yellow sea. What the devil happened, Skipper? The rudder's gone. I didn't have hold of anything at the wheel. What kind of a scow did I sign on? She picks the yellow sea to break up. Say that, Red. She didn't break up by herself. Yeah. I didn't shoot that native quick enough, did I? That's what I'm thinking. The Queen's rudder wouldn't have gone without some help from a saw blade or something. Yeah, and I guess taking on a hot cargo didn't help much, huh? No. To say nothing of that. Rudder, you can pack them. Cargoes and tanks. All right, drop it, Red. Start thinking about that junk that follows us out. That fits, too. Phil, what happened? What is the meaning of this delay? We've paid our passage, haven't we? Haven't Turn we? the men to rigging a jury rudder of some kind, Red. We'll make it Jensen on the power. Captain Carney, you accept a certain amount of responsibility when you accept the responsibility. Yeah, 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 yeah. To say nothing of trouble. Come on in the cabin. Captain Carney, I demand to know how I came aboard this ship in the first place. All right, keep quiet, will it's you? It's only a demand. I have a right to that. I should know. have left you there, but I carried you aboard from the Chamopo bar. Left me there, indeed. Where do you you think you did. He's drunk, Phil. Don't listen to him. He's out of his head. What Alice, like this. my oh, dear? Ray, get out of here. What Alice? Get out on deck and get some air. Alice, my dear, considering get everything. Come Alice. on, get out of here. Phil, darling. Never mind, I'm busy again. Phil. Things are beginning to add up. What do you mean? You breaking up over that swimmer back in the harbor, and now the rudder goes. That's what he was doing, wasn't he? Wrecking the rudder? And that junk that followed us out, it did follow us, didn't it? Yes, sir. Why? If it was only to get the gin sent back, you wouldn't know about it. What else is there? All right. Lily wanted to collect insurance on you. Yes? She wanted to load a cargo of any kind of roots. Then your rudder was to be wrecked, and then the junk was to board and sink you. And she would collect. Ray and I talked her out of it. So the real cargo of gin sen came aboard. But it was too late to change the orders about your rudder and sinking you. That's the truth, Phil. Really, it is. Yeah? I guess we'll wait and find out if it is or not. I didn't know how much of a story to take, but with the queen wallowing like a crippled duck in the middle of the yellow sea, I couldn't find anything else to believe. It took 30 seconds underwater to prove part of it. My rudder's stock had been cut and pried partly loose from the stern post. Who'd ever done the job was to be complimented. The hard weather helm I'd given it had been the final breaking touch, and it was going to take a ship repair yard before the Scarlet Queen would be herself again. (laughs) 
The rest of her story turned into fact later that afternoon when the ugly high stern junk hove into sight in the west and bore down on us from starboard. I sent Alice and Ray into the cabin, broke out the rifles, and stationed the crew along the port side under what cover the main house offered them. Then, with Gallagher covering me with a 30 30, I stood up. I waited while she made her turn into the wind, coasted to a stop about 20 feet away. A native with a rifle slung across his shoulder stood at a rail. Yo, need help! Throw me line, we come aboard! Shove off, Charlie. She's moving in on the skipper. Yeah. Yo, need help! We come aboard! Get underway, you're not coming aboard! I got a bead on him, skipper. Let me have him. It's just a question of who opens fire first. We come aboard! All right! There, right. there it comes! All right, All right Red, take it! Choked off the door as we slumped out of sight. I dropped prone into the cockpit beside Gallagher and stayed there, pecking at every dark head that popped into sight. Then the opening flurry of shots stopped. Neither of the ships offering any targets. But their plans were working out, ours weren't. The current was pushing the junk slowly closer to us, and they were saving everything for a frenzied rush to board us when she touched our side. We had to move somewhere to keep them away. I headed toward the motor controls near the wheel. I raised a spurt of shots from them, and a few slugs exploded slivers of wood around my head as I dropped to my belly again and pushed the starter with my hand. They figured out my move. Some dark crewmen jumped to meet it. A few of them dropped under our fire, but the others got the slatted sails trimmed and the junk moved slowly forward. But even crippled, the Scarlet Queen could beat that maneuver. I slammed the control into full reverse and we wallowed away in the opposite direction. We would have to come about in a complete circle to make our side again. And Gallagher and the crew were dropping every helmsman that climbed to her high stern to man their tiller. And the water distance between us slowly widened until she was out of range. I sent Gallagher to check on the crew and I went into the cabin. Phil! Oh, Phil! Now, wait a minute. What's the matter with Ray? He's dead. I told him to stay far. Yeah, never mind. I'll finish his story. So he got to his feet, went to the porthole, and stayed there until a stray shot nailed him. Yeah, I told yeah, him. Yeah, now I'll tell you the truth. Phil, so, what do you mean? What do you want to tell me? I don't know what you mean. Quit trying to be clever because you aren't. You're just rotten. Show me a bullet hole in the screen and that port he's lying under. We could do that with a pencil, couldn't we? Yeah, move him over under the other one. A slug came through there. You're awfully slow, gorgeous. Phil, it would look all right on the record, wouldn't it? We were attacked by pirates and he was just killed, that's all. And Lily, too. What do we tell him about her? Phil, you don't think that... That you I... got Ray drunk and killed Lily and pow you? No. Doesn't sound like you. Not for a lousy $10,000 worth of ginseng. Phil, what's the difference? They were two wasted people. They were no good to anyone. Phil, if you'd help me, look what we'd have. We can share the money from the ginseng. $10,000, Phil. And our close friendship, darling. It could be good. Couldn't it, Phil? We're the same kind of people, darling. I'll think it over, gorgeous. Go on over there and sit down. I'm too upset to kiss you now. In an hour, the Korean stranger had disappeared over the horizon. And with a few spars, a weighted hatch cover over the stern, and the backs of two crewmen leaning on makeshift tackle, I had a shaky control of the Scarlet Queen again, and we headed in on our course to Tientsin. We eased into an easy sailing position with the wind on our quarter, and I cut the motor. Stand by to make sail! And the pull of the mainsail with our jury rudder, so the men jumped the mizzen halyards. Stop it, chief! Make sail! The mizzen boom, showing a few bullet scars, swung over my head as the sail caught the breeze and stretched full. The man on the port side jury tackle heaved in to meet the swing. For the ship, chief! push of the wind on bow and stern. Scarlet Queen heeled over slightly to starboard and impatiently wallowed forward. But at least she was underway. Well, I guess we'll make it, Skipper. 
but you wouldn't call it ideal. Skipper, the crew wanted me to ask you what we were going to do with that stiff. Shall we toss him to the shock? Not on your life. We're saving him to bargain with. The dame? Yeah. With him gone, her story'd be good to anyone. But, Skipper, with both of them overboard and the cargo still here... Yeah, then we'd tell the story and we'd sell the ginseng. Yeah. It's quite a problem, Skipper, and uh, a whale of a lot of money. Uh-huh. How do you figure on deciding? Well, to turn her in for murder and take the cargo, or let her go and take half. Hmm. Got a coin, Red? Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Tails, we turn her in and take the cargo. Heads, we let her go and take half. Okay? Toss it. Heads. Hmm. Better make it two out of three, don't you think, Red? Yeah, yeah. I say flip it all the way from here to Tiansen. Just so it's fair to everybody and comes out all right. You're a clear thinker, Red. But the suspense has got me. Drink, Skipper? After you, mate. After you. Log entry. Catch Scarlet Queen. 5.30 p.m. Miles traveled, 6,873. Wind brisk, sky fair. Sea smooth with gentle roll. Ship secure for night. Signed, Philip Carney, master. of the Scarlet Queen stars Elliot Lewis as Phil Carney with Ed Max as Gallagher. D.J. Thompson was heard as the Lily. Charles Seal played Ray. Jack Crucian was Pao Yu. And Alice was played by Mary Lansing. Music scored and directed by Richard Arant. The Scarlet Queen, a command radio production directed by James Burton, is written by Gil Dowd and Bob Tallman. Charles Arlington speaking. <laughs>